Good morning, good morning. It is 7.30 News 6 Plus. Welcome to Breakfast with Bridget. I'm your host, Bridget Ellison. It is good to be with you on this June 11th and a Taco Tuesday, also a Soggy Tuesday for us today. We have a great broadcast, a breakfast broadcast for you this morning. We're going to get you ready to get out the door with weather and traffic. We also have a preview out at Magic Kingdom from Ezzy Castro of Tiana's Bayou, uh, the new ride that is officially opening up very soon they got a preview yesterday so we'll go inside shortly we also have a live interview with a great nonprofit called jack's basket which helps families celebrate and support children with down syndrome so we'll be talking to a lead parent in the region about how that organization is supporting our families here in central florida so looking forward to that as well but we got to get you out the door and meteorologist candace campos is in the pinpoint weather center and so our friend humidity is back (laughs) But Mm -hmm. we we need some of this tropical moisture. And we're going to see a lot more of that moisture in Central Florida over the next couple of days. Now, when we talk about these tropical systems, it's a very like hit or miss kind of rain band, right? So some areas will see tons of rain where some areas will be like, well, that wasn't that bad. I could have used some more. Um, And it's not going to be just those afternoon east and west coast sea breeze storms or a line of storms coming in from a cold front. This is one of those that we have to kind of shift our thinking process when it comes to rain, because it's going to kind of come in waves. You know, some areas might be more south focused, some might be more north focused, but certainly a shift in our weather pattern compared to what we've been seeing for the past couple of months. Some areas could see more rain this week than we've seen so far in the last like three months. So certainly some beneficial rain, hopefully drought busting, but yeah, we're actually calling today, we're designating today an inconvenient weather day. It's not to the caliber of a weather alert day because we're not expecting anything um, life-threatening or damaging to our property, but certainly a big change and something that you will be inconvenienced at some point <laughs> throughout the day right. just mm-hmm. because it's inconvenient doesn't mean it's a bad thing just it's a kind of a designation to kind of help you kind of gauge the kind of day we're going to be dealing with so let's take it to the map show you what's going on temperatures for this morning we're starting off in the upper 70s but with these rounds of, of waves of rain we're going to be seeing temperatures not as hot temperatures today are going to be the mid 80s could be the coolest day we've seen in about a month Um, It's also going to be bringing us, again, beneficial rain. A big portion of Central Florida is under a moderate drought already this this year. Um, So there is some good to all this tropical moisture. And with all the talk about tropics, this basic disturbance that is going to be kind of spilling in all that moisture from the southwest could possibly start to develop into something, but not until it crosses over Central Florida and moves out into the Atlantic. So um, not a concern for us here for tropical development, but certainly tropical moisture will be in the forecast. Let's show you uh, what our latest model runs have been showing for the past, for the next couple of hours. You can see that slug of moisture Most of it will stay to our south, but there will be that chance of getting some of that moisture kind of sweeping through central Florida. They will be fast moving bands of tropical downpours, so we're not expecting rain to kind of sit over the same area unless we get one of kind of those surges where the rain keeps going over the same areas over and over again which could accumulate into some significant rain totals. But you can see starting later on this morning into the afternoon, lingering until about sundown, there will be that chance for seeing some widespread rain bringing with it maybe some lightning, but overall it's going to be mainly a rain event. How much rain could we see though by the end of the week? Uh, Latest forecast show between one to three inches across our northern zones along I-4, between about three to five inches, and then a little higher the further south you go. We're talking about five to seven inches of rain potentially, and some isolated maximum amounts can't be ruled out. So as we take you here throughout the next few hours, we're going to be racking up those rounds of rain in the forecast with temperatures back into the mid 80s, your rain chances at 70%. And we're gonna keep those elevated rain chances in the forecast throughout the rest of the week. Could keep some more rain in the forecast for your Father's Day, but hoping to kind of start turning that corner, maybe not as soggy or as widespread of that rain as we head into your weekend. But just keeping the rain gear handy. If you have outdoor plans, I wouldn't say to completely cancel them. If you had that opportunity to be a little bit more 
um, a little more mobile, you know, where you can maybe get indoors for a little bit, go back out. Um, just because it's going to be again hit or miss, it's not going to be a complete washout of a day all day today. Well, as and we need it, so it's hard to it's hard to even complain. But I exactly I have two umbrellas. some some people hear the the designation of inconvenient and think, well, what are they doing complaining about the weather? I'm not saying you know a bad forecast. We're just saying that it is going to be one of those days where you have to kind of keep that weather threat in the back of your mind as you kind of make your plans throughout the day. It's it's like it's one of those days where you need an extra hand. Yeah. Or maybe you wish you hadn't worn flip-flops. So there's that. Uh, yeah. Don't be wearing no suede, suede shoes today. That either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inconvenient. All right. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. Glad to see that rain. I know. Same. All righty. Well, I'm going to check in with Trooper Steve up to some fun things today. And... Uh, Hanging out on the anchor desk with me again today. So, uh, what's up for this morning, yeah. later this morning? Um, right now, um, <clears throat> got the truck ready. We are going to be headed over to uh, Walker Elementary School, I believe, or Walker Middle School. Um, and Walker Middle School at 10 a.m. Okay. And uh, you know. We partner with A Gift for Teaching yep. a lot with News 6, and they're an amazing organization that does so much for our teachers. Uh, and in reality, they do a lot for the students, and the students don't get to see it as much as the teachers do uh, because the community gets together, organizations come together, and they gather so many school supplies for different schools. So today we're going to be delivering some backpacks just as a kind gesture that uh, Lisa Bell got to uh, take place with recently with the great backpack build and uh, get them over there. Uh, I'm going to be uh, funny with you, Bridget, because uh, I'm trying to find where the backpacks are currently. I can't find them. So uh -oh. uh, I am on a mission currently uh, right, searching right. every nook and cranny of the yeah, every nook and cranny of this building. Uh, and then they're going to make some phone calls here at 7 something in the morning to wake some Somebody's folks up to be like, where are my backpacks? backpacks? Yeah. Somebody's got them. So that's going to so happen at 10 a.m. today. School is Go out, ahead. though, right? Uh, school is out, but you know, those teachers, they're not completely out yet. So, uh, there's last finish finishing up uh, cleaning up their classrooms and getting things uh, squared away. So there are some still teachers doing there. And that's what, you know, ties into a traffic thing. Somebody the other day sent me a message and they're like, well, what happens if I know for a fact that school's out and the school oh. and the school lights are flashing? Right. And it's like, you don't know for a fact what is happening at that school. Yeah, so if it's summer, right. If it's summertime, and those lights are flat. I don't care. You need mm -hmm. to slow down because there's a mm -hmm. teacher working. There could be janitorial something. So just yeah. be respectful around the schools. Yeah, well, that so, is awesome. And the roadways are doing good today. Oh, good. Yes, we're looking real good out there, Bridget, for the most part. Uh, we'll, we'll knock this out pretty quickly here. Uh, my uh, chopper cam is down, but we'll move on to the map here. Give me one second as the map pops up. Bam, there we go. Colonial Drive back open this morning, right before uh, Bridget and I got off the desk. Westbound lanes were closed out there at Mercy, but we're good to go, guys. Uh, I-4 also looking real nice east and westbound through the Eatonville area. Lake Mary not seeing as heavy of delays. And then those little slowdowns here and there uh, where we normally would see, we're not. Why? Because school is out. So a lot of the crashes that we will see over the next two months uh, so avoidable because really there's no reason because there's no traffic out there. 528 looking good. 408 up to speed. Azalea Park, good morning to you. Our Conway area also looking good. Now, earlier this morning, we did have some issues down here along 27, but right now the only issue we have is heavy, heavy traffic. So just be careful as you're headed eastbound. If you're watching us from an antenna somewhere or on your Wi-Fi on News 6 Plus, having your breakfast with Bridget this morning, eastbound Champions Gate, once you clear that slowdown, you'll be good to downtown at 33 minutes. So even though that seems high, Bridget, it's really not that bad out there. So as long as people take it nice and easy, it is inconvenient weather day. I can almost feel it in the atmosphere mm -hmm. a little bit out mm -hmm. here. Um, I just want my blanket. I just want my couch. And I want those flip-flops you were talking about. <laughs> Ugh, but just not outside, right? <laughs> oh, I last time I did that, I was going to Marshall's, I think, and it started raining, and I was wearing some real cheapies, and <laughs> I ate it. 
ate it in the parking lot. I was like trying to catch my feet and I was down. It was Dang, the best. It's dangerous and <laughs> gross, right? Ugh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Well, great. Have fun uh, with Gift for Teaching. See you later. All right. See ya. And we have a few news stories that we want to mix into. We also have our live interview coming up next with Jack's Basket. And we want to give you the latest on an investigation that's been making national headlines. Mark Lehman has more on some new video released um, in Marion County of a woman who was interrogated for allegedly shooting her neighbor to death. But here is Mark Lehman with more. And then she started really paying, you know, just pounding on that door. She was relentless. In an interview with Detective Susan Lawrence describes the moment she says unfolded at her front door with her neighbor in June of last year. A.J. Owens confronting Lawrence about throwing a pair of roller skates at her children. She said, um, why do you speak my children this way? And I said, listen, I'm not going to speak to you. Go away. Lawrence telling investigators Owens was enraged. She claimed she told her neighbor to go away, but the confrontation persisted. It was banging, it was yelling. I thought she was just going to break down the door. Okay. So, I mean, I just, my heart was pounding, and I was like, she's really going to kill me. It was in those moments Lawrence says she was in fear for her life. With Owens not armed and still outside, deputies say Lawrence grabbed her gun and shot Owens through the front door, killing her. Was your goal to shoot and kill her? No. What was your goal? to shoot and hopefully, you know, she'd hear the shot and dissipate. After a two-hour interview, detectives decided to arrest Lawrence, who had trouble accepting the news. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to die of a heart attack. So we will keep you updated as more details are released in that investigation and the uh, subsequent trials that will probably come up. But now we want to get to a live interview about a great nonprofit called Jack's Basket, celebrating families with children with Down syndrome. And we have Shannon Thompson, who is the regional lead parent with us this morning. Good morning, Shannon. Good morning. How are you? Great. And I'm excited to talk about this. Yesterday, we talked about a widow's organization, and there are just so many great community groups and nonprofits out here supporting people, going through some things that sometimes can be unexpected but can be something to celebrate. That's what Jack's Basket is about. Tell us more. Yes. So Jack's Basket is um, a nonprofit. We celebrate babies born with Down syndrome um, up to their first birthday. Um, because a lot of parents who receive the news that their baby has Down syndrome, um, it's delivered in a very insensitive way. Mm -hmm. uh, they're told, I'm sorry. Um, it's, it has like a negative connotation with it, and that's just not the case. Um, and so it's our mission to make sure that all of these parents and know that their babies are worthy and are celebrated and they're given Who's this little guy? information. This is my son, Chase. Hey, Chase. Oh, <laughs> so tell us about how you got involved because Chase, your little sweetie there, tell us more about how yes. you got involved. So we did not know that he had Down syndrome until he was born. It was a birth diagnosis. Um, and through that, I looked for community and support. Um, I found it in a Facebook group. And in that Facebook group, someone posted about Jack's Basket. And so I you know, clicked on the link. I ordered one. It was here in a day or two. Um, typically we try to have parents deliver baskets. Um, but it just depends on the availability in the area. So mine was mailed. Um, and when I received it, it was something that I just felt that all parents should have whenever they receive the diagnosis, whether it's prenatally mm -hmm. or at birth. Um, there's just so much good information. It, it, tells you where you can find support and community. Um, and so I signed up to be a volunteer. And so what, what's the basket look like? What, what, tell us about the unwrapping um, when you got yours. So I have one here. This is the basket. Um, there's a, a baby toy. There's some baby books. Um, there's a book about Down syndrome, um, a, a book written by an author whose daughter has Down syndrome. It's called Bloom. Um, some there's just a lot of like gifts and goodies in here also um and just information on where you can find resources in your area um mm -hmm. 
where you there's a Facebook group that it leads you to um, that you can connect with other parents. So when we look at <laughs> what parents go through and families go through in this process, what does it take to get to that? that mindset of celebrating because like you said it can be unexpected so how did you how did you cross into that moment of like this is something we can be happy about this is something that we can right. be positive about encourage other people about how long did it take to get there right. and what what happened I mean there's still days it's it's it can still be hard um you have a child with special needs um but for me it was a it was a birth diagnosis. It was very unexpected. Um, it, it took us a while to come around to the idea that this was something worthy of celebration, that, that this was good. Um, we were shocked and grieving and I, and that's a normal process. And that's something that like finding this community to support you in that and let you know that those feelings are valid, um, is really beneficial. But, um, it, it took us a, I would say, it took me personally probably a week to really come out of this like postpartum fog. I also mm, was under yeah. general anesthesia for my oh, delivery yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and really bond with him. That's not something that I thought would take that long for me. So, um, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's been a process and it's, I, I and feel like there's so a lot happy. of, I, he is, and he's, I mean, he is the happiest. He is it's infectious. Like we can't go mm -hmm. anywhere without drawing. He draws everyone in and oh. it is just, it's, it's, it's so fun to see how much he loves people and, and how much love he receives. So. Yeah. It's, he's definitely, I, I, I wish you had him there, but he's probably <laughs> asleep. But when it comes to, no, I wish I, <laughs> he, probably he got sent like, away. He was up at five yeah. 30. <laughs> When it comes to what families can expect, it can be a wide variety of things with Down syndrome. Yes. So mm -hmm. how is that process going and how do you sort of help other parents through walking through the resources of figuring out what their child might need or how to figure that out? Right. So um, when we're assigned baskets, uh, when we get a basket request, it asks some medical information and we try to connect um, new parents with parents who have been through something similar. So Chase has two holes in his heart. Um, one has closed and he hasn't required open heart surgery, but there are a lot of heart conditions where babies with Down syndrome do require open heart surgery. And so we try to connect parents with someone who has been through something similar. Um, and so that they can help them and, and let them know how that road looks um, or can look um, and, and just have the most relatable story. Mm -hmm. um, and then and at so the age, they a, could mean they, it could mean they need more therapies, different, you know, physical or speech therapies, but that mm -hmm. really varies. Why? Yes, it varies. Yes. We we're in PT, OT, uh, feeding therapy. We're about to start speech. And then we have a friend who's the same age as Chase and he's in, I think like PT. So it just depends. And it, I, and it honestly probably depends on the parent's availability. I'm lucky enough that I'm able to take him to all of those appointments, but it's, mm -hmm. it consumes every day of our week. We mm -hmm. have something every single day. So it's, I mean, and it, it takes can, effort. It can be one of those things where it depends on where you are. And so it's great to have yes. groups like this to sort of Help, mm -hmm. It helps trim down the, the search time for you and looking for resources. Yes. I had a friend who talked about how moving from one state to another, and at the time it was a little mm -hmm. daunting because her daughter with Down syndrome also mm -hmm. needed certain types of services and, and therapies. Right. But it ended up being mm -hmm. a blessing because the state that they ended up relocating to had much better mm -hmm. resources than where yes. they were living before so you mm -hmm. all can work as a network to sort of help yes. steer people in the right direction mm -hmm. yeah and i see a lot of parents talk about like relocating for that exact reason because the resources vary greatly where you're at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when it comes to like you said finding out in the hospital after 30 plus weeks of carrying your baby mm -hmm. and looking forward to this next chapter, what do yes. advocates with Jack's Basket want 
health providers to know or what how do you advocate for working on the sensitivity of handling this type of thing? Right. So we've developed a curriculum for medical providers. Um, they can earn credits for it. Um, and so they just not to deliver the news as I'm sorry, or, you know, a, a lot of times people are offered abortions. Um, and it's just, it, it's such a negative experience um, receiving their child's diagnosis. Um, and it is and sometimes our it mission can be wrong to, too. Yes. Pre, yes. Prenatally, it, it can be wrong. Um, and so it's, we're trying to reach doctors and medical providers um, so we can help them learn the best way to deliver the news because we have plenty of experience and plenty different stories. I mean, not everyone, not everyone's experience is negative. Mm -hmm. Um, some doctors have been absolutely wonderful with Mm -hmm. the news. Um, and mine, I wouldn't say mine were bad. They just actually kind of didn't deliver it to us. Really. We were Mm -hmm. just kind of handed his paperwork at the end and we're like, they said, we're sure you already know, but he has down syndrome. So, Mm. you know, it was just, um, swept under the rug around it. Right. Yes. Right. And, that, and so when you're receiving a diagnosis like that, compassion's important. And mm-hmm. so that's our mission is everyone gets to receive it that way. And so how can we help out? What's next for Jack's Basket? What, what are some of the things that you're excited about? Um, actually, right now we have a Burgers for Baskets um, in the month of June. It's, we're raising money so that we can provide baskets uh, to more babies. Um, we just celebrated 8,000 babies. We actually, the other day, just celebrated our first international basket delivery parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have a diagnosis or know someone who does, you can go to jacksbasket.org um, and request a basket or go on there and, and donate. Um, there's plenty of ways you can get involved. Well, I just adore this, and I hope that we can feature this some more in the future and Shannon I appreciate you joining us so early in the morning and maybe maybe next time we can see Chase too so yeah (laughs) but we thank you for having me so much yeah thank you for all you're doing to help support other (laughs) parents and families as well yes thank you all right take care so we'll have more on this on clickorlando.com later jacksbasket.org so spread the word there and Maybe try to get some baskets out to maybe a friend or family member who might be encouraged by having that. We have some other great news this morning. I want to take you out to Disney World where Tiana's Bayou Adventure, formerly Splash Mountain, is about to officially open. But the media previews are heavy right now. Yesterday, our Ezzy Castro and Haley Coons got to ride on the bayou. So here they are. On a hot summer day like today, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is the way to go if you're here at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. And let me tell you something about this ride. It was a lot of fun. The ride was actually formerly known as Splash Mountain. It's based off the 2009 movie, The Princess and the Frog. And it was in 2020 when Disney made the official announcement that the ride would go through a new era and close Splash Mountain in 2023. And here we are in summer of 2024, and we got the chance to experience a 1920s New Orleans thanks to Tiana's dream of opening her very own restaurant. We took our own cameras on the ride, and we did notice some nostalgic items from Splash Mountain. But of course, this brings Tiana's story to life with the help of some critters and other characters from the film. And before you know it, comes the big drop down the bayou. Take a look. Here we go. And I gotta say, I don't want to give out too much, but the music is just outstanding. I gotta say, the music is something that you will really enjoy when you come and ride Tiana's Bayou. Now, this is not officially open to the public just yet. You're gonna have to wait a couple of weeks. June 28th is the date, and of course, we have all the information about Tiana's Bayou Adventure on ClickOrlando.com. From Walt Disney World, Ezzy Castro, get the results, you six. Isn't that exciting? Can't wait to see it, hear it. Still get splashed, right? Especially in this heat. So just in time for summer, excited about that. And it was Haley's birthday, so happy 
belated birthday to Haley as well. We want to tell you to enter for these tickets to see Janet Jackson while you can. This is going to be on the Insider page. If you're not an insider, that's free to do as well. So make sure you sign up, enter to win for your chance to see Janet Jackson and Nelly. That's going to be a good one right here in Orlando. Why not go ahead and sign up? And, hey, if you win, you got – take me. I, w- I want to see her again. I saw her in Charlotte a while back with my sister. So if you need someone to go, let me know. Just give me a call or an email, Facebook. All right. And we're hitting the road Thursday, don't forget. We'll be in Kissimmee live from 4 to 7 p.m. at Matador Tacos and Tapas. So come out, see the new six crew, and uh, – We hope that you'll enjoy the stories that our team has been putting together. Also, our chief meteorologist, Tom Sorrells, if you have not heard, after 24 years, is retiring. It is bittersweet for us because we love and adore him just as much as you do. And so he is like family to us. His final forecast will be Friday, June 18th. And we want to hear from you. Send in videos and notes to memories at WKMG.com. And let us know. Because... I tried to write something on Facebook, on his Facebook, and I was I was crying about this. And my daughter was like, what's wrong? And I was trying to explain it. But we want to hear from you because we know he's like family to you, too, after all these years. And so we're looking forward to him kicking off this next chapter. But we want to send him off and give him his flowers uh, because we've appreciated everything he has done for us here and for the community in Central Florida, getting us through 24 years of some crazy weather here in Central Florida. So go check all that out, and we'll be back at 7.30 right here tomorrow on News 6 Plus, and I'll see you at noon as well. Next up is WeatherWise with meteorologist Jonathan Kegas and Trooper Steve is on patrol, so he'll be out there with a gift for teaching. We'll see you there.